Welcome to a Veteran's Guide to Genshin, where I will be teaching preferably new players of Genshin Impact on how to tackle certain parts of the game. This video's topic will pertain to the Abyss, or Spiral Abyss. I'm Decapitated Soda, a player who has played Genshin for 3 years since the launch of the game, and when it comes to the Abyss, I've consistently cleared 36 stars of the Abyss since 1.6, so I do recognize myself as someone qualified enough to talk about this. First off, if for whatever reason you don't know what the Spiral Abyss is, it's this place in Tavat. This is basically your endgame. Once you're up to date with the story, done all the quests, did all that you can to explore this beautiful world and befitting of its name, all that's left to do is to gaze into the abyss and spiral down to chaos. Let's talk about the very first thing you should do before anything else. I'd like to call this segment scouting, as this stage is when you first assess how you're going to beat the floor by analyzing what mobs will spawn and how you'll counter them. Let's take floor 9 for example. Chamber 1 in both halves seem to have a lot of enemies, so you may need a character that can provide some crowd control. Chamber 2's first half has enemies who are immune to Hydro and Cryo, but both are vulnerable to Pyro, while the second half has enemies vulnerable to Hydro, so you'll need a Pyro character on the first team and a Hydro character on the second team. Lastly. Chamber 3, more often than not, is going to be a challenge for your team's damage output, so maybe your first team will emphasize a bit more on Vaporize or Melt, and your second team will make use of Electrocharged or maybe also Vaporize teams too. In summary, this stage of beating the Abyss is all about analysis on how you could beat the Abyss with the characters you have. I'm sure most of you will struggle with this concept of team building in the game, but that's going to be its own video, so uh, subscribe if you want to check that out sometime soon. I believe it's also worthy to note for this segment that every once in a while, the developers will place a chamber in one or some of the floors with a defense mechanic, where you have to protect a monolith and that can very well affect your team compositions for the chambers. Personally. Whenever I see one of these, I make sure I have a character that can do some crowd control, even if it means knocking them back a bit, so long as you can delay the mobs from attacking the monolith, then that's fine by me. Another worthy mention is the blessings of the Abyssal Moon, which gives you an advantage in the field so long as you fulfill a particular condition. For example, as of the time I recorded this, the blessings of the Abyssal Moon is whenever Geo Damage is dealt onto an opponent, then you receive a Geo Damage increase with a maximum of 3 stacks. More often than not, the blessings of the Abyssal Moon is kind of like indirect marketing from the developers to have you pull for the limited characters at the time. But by all means, try taking advantage of this conditional buff by seeing who you can put on the team. For this blessing in particular, you can put characters like Ningguang or Noel to maximize the damage increase you can get from the buff. Oh, right, let's not forget about knowing your enemies. For example, the Ruin Machines have a particular weak point that you can take advantage of, like the Eye of a Ruin Guard. Once you aim and shoot the Eye two times, they're down, and it'll be ample time for you to do some damage. A Geo Lava Churl is best countered with a Claymore unit or Zhongli, so you can shred the shield. Basically, know your enemies, and you'll know how to beat them. After scouting comes strategizing, which is how you're going to play so that you'll get 3 stars in the chamber. Or, in other words, it's your game plan. Before starting the chamber, you'll get 3 cards with each providing a different buff. Make sure you pick the card that benefits the team you're playing for that half of the chamber. After that, what I like to do when I start the floor is to know which mob spawns where. Are there some at the front? Are they beside me? Are they about to give me gravitational disintegration from behind? I don't know, but I'll know once the floor starts. One way you can easily identify where the mobs are is by paying attention to this red arrow, as it points to whoever is unfortunate enough to face your blade. 
Once I know where they are, then comes target selection. For me, preferably, I always go for the mobs that can get staggered or knockback easily. This is because the mobs that do get knocked back easily will huddle towards you anyway because they have to be in range to hit you quite literally beating up the biggest in the yard but there are chambers where you only get a bunch of mobs who get knocked back easily so how do i choose which one to disappear in this case i go for the mob that is stationary and has a lot of range to attack you think of crossbow hillichurls and bandits or in this case march 9 again attacking march 9 in this case is going to bring all the boys to the yard because they have to be in range to have a taste of my milkshake what if there's a chamber with only a bunch of knockbackable mobs then use crowd control abilities like necrosis skill and alt venti's alt and other characters it's a pretty simple question to answer to be honest with you once i'm done with target selection i have to know how exactly am i going to make them disintegrate in which case i'm talking about your rotation each team composition has a rotation. A brilliant example of a rotation is this image right here. It shows you which character you have to switch to, what abilities to use, then which character to use next, so on and so forth. I wish I could explain it to you guys on how exactly people come up with these rotations, but that's going to take a lot from me. In which, hey, another video for this video series of mine, I guess. Once everything is set is exactly when you want everything in motion. This segment is called executing in which you will execute your plan to get you those primos. Now I guess it's important to mention that this segment along with strategizing is kind of a loop in how I would beat the abyss. Per se, let's look at this footage for floor 9. I know there's going to be more mobs that'll spawn after I kill off this one, but I would have absolutely no idea where they'll spawn. Are they going to be in front of me, beside me, or inside me? I don't know, but I'll know once this guy's dead. Once they spawn, I strategize how I would like to remind them that they serve zero purpose, and then execute. Strategize, then execute. It's just one big loop until you eventually clear the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my general guide for how to beat the abyss and walking you through my thought process on how I would beat the abyss. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are expecting me to go into detail on what are the best teams to go for when beating the abyss and for sure there are some teams out there that are generally good for the abyss. Maybe some of you are expecting me to say which characters are the best to build for the abyss and likewise with team comps there are characters you'd want to build for the abyss. However, preferably, I think I'd like to answer those questions in a separate guide video as these kinds of questions are more on how to build your characters and all and this video is all about how to beat the abyss. Plus, in regards to what are the best teams or best characters, I'd rather do a tier list video on it to be honest with you. So, if you're interested, tell me in the comment section. Anyhow, with all that out of the way, I guess a montage of me beating the abyss is deserved. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comment section below. Where are you? Where are you? And I'm so sorry. Where are you? Oh yeah, I forgot about the ley line disorder, no? Fuck me, man. What the fuck are you going? Do about this, idiot. What the me. fuck's that guy's problem? Attaboy. Ito is literally just unga bunga. Oh shit, we're done? <laughs> oh my god, we're done. We're done already. Okay. Adventure time. Finn the dog. Finn the dog and Jake the human. Yes. Oh my god. Absolutely. Finn the dog and Jake the human. Exactly just as I remembered. Um, I just stay up, cashing in my bad luck. 
Sometimes I call it a draw. The fuck are they doing? <laughs> this guy lost? <laughs> what? What's happening? <laughs> they were going forwards to nothing, anyways. So let's make you fly, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> it took you that long to get down. Holy shit. Okay, I'm sorry. I could theoretically just. You know what? I'm gonna literally just retry this chamber. Like the first half for you guys. Just so I could prove to you how easy this part is gonna be if you have Gene. It is literally that easy. <laughs> yeah. The fuck? Wait. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time I've, si I've seen it, honestly. Zhong Li hitting a hundred thousand? This is my first time. Holy shit. Probably didn't notice that, like, Zhong Li hit like another hundred thousand. If you don't get your. ass out of here i'm gonna fuck your ass for real you're lucky you're a robot i'm an idiot oh my god i'm an idiot i'm actually stupid i should be diagnosed with some like mental illness or something i don't know i activated the ult without uh, Okay, there you go. I did it right this time. Come to be. Hit him. Hit him with it. Yar. Hit him with it. Yar. Oh my god. Crazy. Anyways, that's done. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away, but I know that I don't and I won't ever stop cause you know I gotta win every day, day. Go!